Hello, my name is Dr. James O'Donovan, and today we're going to be covering important information that you need to know about a medication called gabapentin, often known by its brand names, Neurontin. Now, gabapentin is commonly used to treat epilepsy as well as nerve pain, which can result from conditions like diabetes, shingles, or after an injury. Now, in epilepsy, gabapentin is thought to work by reducing abnormal electrical activity in the brain, helping to prevent seizures. For nerve pain, it's believed to block pain by affecting the pain signals traveling through the brain and down the spine. Now, gabapentin is available only by prescription, and it comes in the form of tablets, capsules, as well as a liquid that you can swallow. Now, in this video, we're going to cover who can and can't take it, how and when to take it, side effects, potential interactions with other medications, emergency and overdose information, plus common questions and where to find out more information. I also want to state up front that this video is not sponsored or paid for in any way, and it's intended as an informational and educational resource only. I don't have any affiliation with any pharmaceutical company at the time of making this video, and in no way endorse any of the medications that I discuss in these videos. It's simply intended to provide you with factual information about the medication. Always remember to consult your own health provider first and follow all of the instructions that they give you closely to avoid any harm. So now let's get into the main section of the video. Who can and can't take gabapentin? Well, gabapentin can be taken by most adults and children aged six and over. However, it might not be suitable for everyone. To ensure that it's safe for you, you should tell your doctor if you've ever had an allergic reaction to gabapentin or any other medication, you've ever misused or been addicted to a medication, or you're trying to get pregnant, you're already pregnant, or a breastfeeding, or if you're on a controlled sodium or potassium diet, or if your kidneys don't work well, because gabapentin liquid contains sodium and potassium. Now, in terms of how and when to take gabapentin, well, gabapentin is a prescription-only medication, and it's really important that you take it exactly as your doctor has advised. The dosage of gabapentin will really vary depending on your individual situation as well as your condition. Now, for epilepsy, the usual dose for adults and older children aged 12 and older is 900 milligrams to 3,600 milligrams a day split into three doses. For younger children, aged 6 to 12, the dose will vary depending on their weight. Now, for nerve pain in adults, the usual dose is also 900 to 3,600 milligrams a day, again split into three doses. Now, gabapentin comes in several forms. Capsules, which are 100, 300, or 400 milligrams. Tablets, which are 600 or 800 milligrams. And liquid, which can be 2 mils, that is equivalent to 100 milligrams of gabapentin. Now, typically, your doctor will start you on a low dose and gradually increase it in order to find the right dose for you. In terms of how to take it, you should swallow gabapentin capsules and tablets whole with a drink of water or juice. Do not chew them. You can also take gabapentin with or without food, but try to take it at the same time each day. Now, if you or your child are taking the liquid form, use the plastic syringe or spoon that is provided with the medication to measure the dose accurately. You should avoid using a kitchen spoon because it won't measure the correct amount. In terms of how long to take it, well, for epilepsy, gabapentin is often taken for many years even if your condition is under control. For nerve pain, you may continue to take gabapentin for several months or longer to prevent the pain from returning. However, you should always have regular reviews with your doctor or health provider to ensure that it's working for you and you're not becoming addicted to it. Now, if you forget to take it, then take the next dose as soon as you remember. If it's within two hours of your next dose, skip the missed dose and take the next dose as normal. Never take two doses at the same time to make up for an extra dose or for a missed one. Now, if you've got epilepsy, it's especially important to take gabapentin regularly because missing doses may trigger a seizure. If you often forget doses, consider setting an alarm to remind you or ask your pharmacist for advice on other ways to help you how to remember to take your medicine. Now, taking too much gabapentin can cause unpleasant side effects, and you should seek urgent medical advice if you've taken more than your prescribed dose and you feel very dizzy or sleepy, you've got double vision, you start slurring your words, you have diarrhea, or if you faint or pass out. If you need to go to the emergency department, take the gabapentin packet or leaflet inside it, along with any remaining medication. Now, in terms of stopping gabapentin, it's crucial not to stop taking gabapentin suddenly, even if you feel fine. Stopping it abruptly can cause serious problems, especially if you've got epilepsy, as it may lead to seizures. 
Now, if you stop gabapentin suddenly, you might also experience severe withdrawal symptoms, things like anxiety, difficulty sleeping, nausea, pain, and sweating. Now, to try and prevent withdrawal symptoms, your doctor will help you gradually reduce your dose if you're going to come off it. Again, don't stop taking gabapentin without consulting your doctor. So now let's move on and just briefly discuss side effects of gabapentin, because like all medications, it can cause side effects, although not everybody gets them. Common side effects, which might happen in more than one in 100 people, include things like feeling sleepy, tired or dizzy, nausea and vomiting, diarrhea, mood changes, swollen arms and legs, blurred vision, a dry mouth, difficulty getting an erection, weight gain, memory problems, and headaches, as well as an increased risk of infections. Now, these side effects are usually mild, and they tend to go away by themselves. But if they persist or they bother you, then you should speak to your doctor. Now, serious side effects are thankfully very rare, but you should seek medical attention if you experience any of the following. So thoughts of harming or killing yourself, high temperature, swollen glands, yellowing of the skin or eyes, unusual bruising or bleeding, severe tiredness or weakness, or unexpected muscle pain or weakness. You should also speak to your doctor if you have long-lasting stomach pain, you're feeling sick or being sick very often, or if you've got muscle pain or weakness if you're having dialysis due to kidney failure. Very rarely some people have hallucinations, which are seeing or hearing things that aren't there. Again, for any of these, you should speak to your medical provider. In very rare cases, gabapentin can cause a serious allergic reaction called anaphylaxis. So again, you need to seek immediate medical help. If you experience swelling of the lips, mouth, throat, or tongue, you have difficulty breathing or a tight feeling in the throat, or if you're turning blue, gray, or pale, particularly on the palms or soles of your feet if you've got darker skin. Now, some people do ask about long-term side effects and importantly, addiction. Now, it's important that I say upfront, some people can become addicted to gabapentin. Now, if this happens, you might have exp or experience withdrawal symptoms after stopping the medication. Now, to avoid these symptoms, it's really important to reduce your dose gradually under your doctor's supervision. Don't stop taking gabapentin without discussing it with your doctor first. Now, if you're concerned about becoming physically dependent on gabapentin, again, talk to your doctor. It's important to stress the risks of addiction and to use this medication only as prescribed. Now, I'd also like to talk briefly about pregnancy, breastfeeding, and fertility. Now, gabapentin is not generally recommended during pregnancy due to insufficient information about its safety for the baby. However, if you take gabapentin for epilepsy, it's crucial to control your condition during pregnancy because seizures can harm both you and your baby. So if you're trying to get pregnant or you become pregnant whilst taking gabapentin, I'd advise you to speak with your doctor urgently. For those who are pregnant or planning to become pregnant, your doctor might recommend taking a high dose of folic acid, so five milligrams a day, to help prevent birth defects. Gabapentin can pass into the breast milk in small amounts, but it hasn't been known to cause any side effects in breastfed babies. But if you notice any unusual symptoms in your baby, again, contact your doctor immediately. In terms of how gabapentin works, so whilst the exact mechanism isn't fully understood, gabapentin is thought to work by reducing abnormal electrical activity in the brain to prevent seizures and by blocking pain signals traveling through the brain and spine to relieve nerve pain. More information about gabapentin, including specific issues around pregnancy, breastfeeding, and long-term use, please do check out the links I've included in the description box of this video. And remember, always speak to your own health provider first before taking this medication or making any decisions about coming off it.